Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments so you can recall that in the last lecture we had completed a very important chapter in this course which is about incomplete block design and uh, my advice to you I have not understood anything i think uh, simply try to revise the lecture again and again and try to think about those concepts one by one and then try to see how you can join the two concepts together and uh, well you, when uh, you are in my class i can show you very clearly but since uh, we are away so that is why this is one of the most uh, simple approach to understand different uh, smaller topics of incomplete block design analysis and then try to see uh, in a broader picture that how you are trying to fit different parts of a picture and then you are trying to create a nice picture and if you remember you have solved uh, uh, sometime a sort of puzzle where uh, there is a picture and this picture has been partitioned into different parts and then you are asked that you try to join those different parts in that picture so that the picture look complete so that is the similar story with the incomplete block design also because this is a very fundamental topic and now you can see that once you understand the incomplete block design after that understanding any of the design is very simple you simply have to choose uh, in an appropriate way the values of different parameters and then you can do it so now continuing on the same lines uh, i believe now that you have understood the basic concepts of incomplete block design and now i am going to start with a a specific type of uh, design that is called as balanced incomplete block design and if you try to recall i am not doing something new uh, when we started the course then first we had uh, learned that how are we going to conduct the analysis of variance and then we had uh, discussed the crd rbd lsd and so on so similar approach i am following here also now we have understood how to do uh, the analysis of variance in the incomplete block design setup how to do intra block analysis how to do inter block analysis and how to combine them together so now i will try to consider here a specific type of setup in which the treatments are going to be allotted to different blocks in a particular way and that way is the rules of balanced incomplete block design so balanced incomplete block design also has some rules for example if you remember in crd and rbd also you had some rules uh, through which you were trying to assign different treatments to the different blocks right for example in the case of rbd you said uh, that every treatment has to be assigned to every block once and only once so similarly bibd has its own rule so we are going to understand those rules that how the treatments are allotted to the balanced incomplete block design and uh, once we understand uh, this part then i will try to give you a uh, different uh, smaller definitions which are used in the balanced incomplete block design we may or may not be using them all but it is important for you that once you are trying to learn the topic of balanced incomplete block design so at least you should know this terminology and depending on your need you can use it right so now let us begin our uh, lecture and first we try to understand what are the different conditions or what is the approach to assign different treatments to different blocks in the setup of balanced incomplete block design which is shortly called as bibd balanced incomplete block design so let us begin our lecture so now you see 
you have now considered the designs like uh, completely randomized design or randomized block design which are the complete block designs right uh, and similarly we have some designs which are incomplete block designs like as balance incomplete block design this is called as b i b d b is coming from here i is coming from incomplete b is coming from this block and d is coming from design and similarly we have one more design which is called as partially balanced incomplete block design which is shortly called as p b i b d so p is coming from this word here partially and then b i b d is coming from balance incomplete block design right so we are going to consider here the balance incomplete block design so now it is very simple for you to understand when we are saying that what is the balance and complete block design that means you simply have to think that how the different treatments are going to be assigned to different blocks and what are those constraints what are those conditions what are those those uh, requirements right so as uh, we have done earlier we are going to assume that uh, we have here the parameters b k r v and we, uh, so these four parameters you know and uh, rest we will try to see as an and uh, when we need we will define them so we are assuming here that there are b blocks and uh, every block has got the same number k of plots each so now you have to be careful that earlier we had uh, considered the number of plots in the ith block to be here ki but now we are saying that here ki is going to be here k now you have to be also careful when you are trying to understand the symbol here k in the case of incomplete block design the k was the vector of uh, the number of plots k1 k2 ab but here this number is the same because it is a scalar quantity i hope uh, this will not create any confusion to you you have to be careful and then we are assuming that every treatment is replicated r times in the design now we are saying that uh, each of the treatment occurs at most once in the block you see we i am using here a word at most this means either the treatment will appear or not appear at all so nij will take value here zero in case if the treatment is absent uh, from the block and if and it will take value 1 in case if the treatment is present in the block right and what is your here nij nij is the number of times the j treatment occurs in the ith block where i goes from 1 to b and j goes from 1 to b and you can recall that in the case of incomplete block design we had expressed all these uh, numbers nij's in the form of a matrix and we had called that matrix as incident matrix that was indicated by capital N. Now, in the case of BIBD that is balanced incomplete block design, we are making here one more assumption and which is a little bit different than other designs. We are assuming here that every pair of treatment occurs together in lambda of the B blocks right now what does this mean actually that uh, every pair of treatment occurs together in lambda of the b blocks that is something new which you are uh, understanding for the first time so what i am trying to say here that you have got here v treatment suppose those treatments are tau 1 tau 2 tau v so if you try to take any pair of treatment say tau 1, tau 2 or say tau 4, tau 7, any pair of the treatment, then those two treatments are going to appear in lambda blocks out of B blocks. Well, do not worry, I will try to take an example and then and I will try to show you that how these things are happening. So, now these are the conditions uh, or these are the requirements that how the treatments are to be assigned to different blocks in the case of balanced incomplete block design. So, now you can see here that there are five parameters b, k, v, r and lambda and these five parameters are going to indicate the b, i, b, d 
So, in general we can say that the design D is uh, represented by 5 parameters B k, V r and lambda. And now these 5 parameters B k, V r and lambda they are not uh, like that you can choose them in any way, they are not uh, chosen arbitrarily, but they are chosen in such a way such that following 3 conditions are satisfied. What are these conditions? B k is equal to V r that is the first condition. Second condition is lambda times V minus 1 is equal to r a minus 1 and then the third condition is B is greater than or equal to V and hence uh, you can conclude using the, the other condition that r is greater than k. Right. So, how this is happening and uh, how the treatments are assigned and how these conditions are going to be fulfilled that I will try to show you with an example. And I will also try to show you that what is the proof of these three conditions because they are trying to indicate something they are not coming say arbitrarily. Right. So, now if you try to see here from the definitions and the type of algebra what you did in the case of incomplete block design. So, hence uh, we can uh, write here that summation over i and ij is equal to k for all i and we can write here that summation over j and ij is equal to r for all j. And we are trying to take uh, this type of summation of this uh, pairwise product. So, this is n 1 j into n i j prime plus n 2 j into n i j prime plus up to here n b j n b j prime. Now, if you try to see what is this uh, summation, you have said that n i j is going to take value here 0 or 1. Now, you are trying to say that the to total number of pairs of treatments which are appearing in this uh, design, they are going to be see here lambda, right. So, now what are we going to do here? When we are trying to take any product of 2 n i j and say n i j prime because uh, j is going from 1 to v. So, now these two values can take the value say 0 1, 1 0, 0 0 or 1 1. So, now in case if you try to take their products this is going to be 0 0 0 and it is going to be 1 only when n i j and n i j prime both are occurring in the same block. So, out of these many terms, the number of times the product is going to be 1, that will be 1 plus 1 up to here lambda time, because that is your assumption that uh, the pair of treatment is occurring only in lambda blocks. Right. So, this is how we are going to understand it. Now, in case if you try to look about the conditions that we had seen during the incomplete block design like as orthogonality. So, do you remember that we had done the conditions for the orthogonality of the design and one of them was n transpose is equal to r k transpose upon small n that was the necessary and sufficient condition for the orthogonality of the design. And we had done one more condition which was only a sufficient condition that n i j upon r. If this is constant, then the design is orthogonal. But now, if you try to see in the case of balance in complete block design, what is happening? n i j can take here two possible values. 0 and 1. So, that means, the value of n i j upon r, this will be here 0 upon r or 1 upon r. So, can you really say that n i j upon r remains constant for 
all j no because here itself you can see that uh, an ig upon r can take here two possible values one is here 0 and 1 upon r so now we can say that the design is not orthogonal and now you can understand that when we had uh, discussed about the orthogonality of the design in the setup of incomplete block design then we had understood that if the design is orthogonal then there is no discrimination between the adjusted and unadjusted sum of its squares that was the case when you consider the randomized block design right so in case if you try to yes. see here that once we are trying to uh, conclude here that this balanced incomplete block design is not an orthogonal design that means the way you had handled the randomized block design that either you estimate or find the sum of a square due to treatment first or sum of a square due to block first that will not make any difference but in the case of uh, incomplete block design you had seen that in case if the design is not orthogonal then it is going to make a difference and based on the normal equations you will have two choices that if you want to test the hypothesis for the treatment effects then you are going to eliminate the block effects and you are going to obtain the reduced normal equations in terms of treatment effects and consequently you will try to find out the adjusted sum of square due to treatment and unadjusted sum of square due to block so now you can see here that in the case of balanced incomplete block design we have established that this is not going to be an orthogonal design so as soon as you conclude that this uh, uh, observation then obviously there can be or there are going to be two possible analysis of various tables and it depends whether you want to conduct the test of hypothesis for the block effects or for the treatment effects that is if either you want to test the equality of uh, block effects or the equality of treatment effects but obviously as we have discussed earlier also that whenever we are trying to work in a real life experiment our uh, main objective is to conduct the test of hypothesis for the treatment effects that is the equality of treatment effect that is h not tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v so now here also we are going to do the same thing that uh, we will try to develop the analysis of variance in case of balanced incomplete block design for the null hypothesis for the equality of treatment effects now as soon as you come on the aspect of uh, this treatment effects then you know that you can conduct either the intra block analysis of variance and you can also conduct inter block analysis and after that you can combine both of them together and you can execute the analysis of variance that, that we have the discussed as recovery of inter block information right so now this is precisely what is our aim in this chapter on balanced incomplete block design that first we are going to talk about the different definitions uh, terminologies etc and then after that we will attempt to conduct the intra block analysis of variance for the treatment effects then we are going to assume that the block effects are random and we are going to uh, conduct the inter block analysis then you are going to get two estimators for the treatment effects one from intra block and then from inter block 
And now you have learnt that how you can combine them efficiently using the concept of minimum variance and bias estimator. So, what are we going to do? We are going to consider the weighted arithmetic mean of these two estimators, where the weights are going to be determined by the finding that weights have to be inversely proportional to the variance of the estimators. And then using those weights, you are going to construct the estimator and further you are going to use it for the recovery of interblock information. And based on that, we will try to conduct the analysis of variance. And while you are trying to do so, some complications may come as you have uh, seen in the case of uh, incomplete block design that uh, there will be quantities like the variance of random errors, variance of the block effect which uh, may be unknown to us in practice. So, one option will be there that we are going to estimate them on the basis of given set of data. Then we are going to use those estimates in the weights. We are going to estimate the weights. Using those estimated weights, we are going to once again estimate the treatment effect using the estimator based on the weighted arithmetic mean. Then based on that, we will try to suggest how we are going to conduct the analysis of variance. So, this is the objective, this is what exactly are we going to do in this chapter. So, now I have given you a broad idea that what are we going to do in this lecture and in the next couple of lectures. So, now it would not be difficult for you to follow this lecture. And now you can also understand that uh, in case if you want to conduct all these things, whatever you have learnt in the case of incomplete block design analysis, they are going to be useful. Now, when I am trying to conduct the intra block analysis, inter block analysis, or say recovery of uh, inter block information, then I have two options. First option is that I try to find all the expressions completely afresh as we have done in the case of incomplete block design analysis or the second option is since we already have found all the expressions. So, why not to use those expressions here directly under the setup of balance incomplete block design. For example, here now you know what is your number of blocks, what are the number of plots, what is the uh, number of uh, replication and then you have here one more parameter lambda and you, and you also know what are the values of nij's. So, how the incidence matrix is going to look like that you also know. So, we can simply borrow those expressions from the incomplete block design analysis. We can write them here and we can substitute these values and based on that we can simply obtain the expression. For example, in case if I want to find out the reduced normal equations in the class uh, in the case of intra block analysis, then I simply have to find out the value of q, vector, c matrix and then I have to see what is their structure or what are their structures under the cutoff of uh, BIBD, under the specification of the parameters under BIBD and then we can use it directly. So, surely this approach is going to help us and this is going to save a lot of time. So, what I will be doing here that I will try to use the results what we already have derived in the case of incomplete block design. And whenever needed, I will just borrow those steps here in the case of BIBD and I will try to solve them and I will get an expression what I want. So, now this also indicates a request to you that unless and until you have understood the expressions of intra block analysis, inter block analysis, recovery of inter block information from the setup of incomplete block design, it may be difficult for you to understand 
the way we are going to progress. So, that is why I have explained you that how are we going to progress further and it is important for you that you try to revise the earlier lectures, try to feed those concepts inside your mind so that whenever we are trying to use it, you can use them here directly. So, this is what I wanted to, to tell you. Now, we come back to our slides and try to move further and try to see what are the different other aspects in the case of balance in complete block design. Okay, let us begin. Right. So, now we try to take here an example of this BIBD. Right. Sometime you will see that uh, in the case of BIBD, uh, this is represented as a BK and then they try to put here a semicolon and then VR and then semicolon and lambda. That is just to, uh, uh, to indicate it in a better way there is no other reason. So, now we consider here an example where we have here b is equal to 10. That means, we are going to have here 10 blocks and suppose we call those blocks as b 1, b 2, b 10 and suppose we have here 6 treatments which we are going to indicate here as a t 1, t 2, t 3, t 4, t 5 and t 6 and k here is equal to 3 that is the number of plots in a block. And then we are going to take it r equal to 5. That means, every treatment is being uh, replicated 5 number of time. And then I try to take here lambda is equal to 2. That means, every pair of treatment is being repeated 2 number of times in the entire design. Right. So, now let us try to see that how this design will look like. So, you can see here, here I have written the blocks which are here b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4, b 5, b 6, b 7, b 8, b 9 and b 10. And then we have here these plots. So, you can see here this is here, there are here 3 plots in which we are trying to give the treatment number 1, treatment number 2 and treatment number 5. And the same story has been repeated. For example, you can see here in this block number 5, we have here 3 plots in which we are trying to give here treatment number 1, 4 and 5. So, similarly, uh, now each of this uh, block, they, are, they have got here 3 possible treatments in 3 blocks and you can see here that all the treatments are not occurring in all the blocks. Means, if you want to have here a uh, a complete block design, then the block size should be equal to the number of treatments, right. So, for example, here in this case, uh, uh, the first block B1, you have here T1, T2, T5, but if you want here that it is a complete block uh, design, then you need to have here T3, T4 and T6, but then it is going to increase the number of uh, plots also, number of experimental units also, experimental material also that will increase the cost of the experimentation. You can imagine that when somebody is going to conduct an experiment, then the then it takes some time to collect every observation. So, if you are trying to collect only 3 observation or if you are trying to collect uh, 6 observation, do not you think that it is going to take uh, more time and then you will need here more cost also because you are going to use the experimental material in 6 plots. So, more time, more labor, more money, more cost all these things will come and that is why as we have discussed in the first lecture on the incomplete block design that why this is important. Now, we have understood. Now, you can see here I am not using here all the treatment, but I am using here only 3 treatments out of 6 treatment in each of the block. Right. Now, we try to see what is here R and if you try to see here we have understood what is here B equal to 10, we have understood here what is here V equal to 6. And now, we have also understood what is here the meaning of k equal to 3. Now, we try to see here what is the meaning of here r equal to 5. r equal to 5 means every treatment has been replicated 5 times. So, you can see here suppose you take the treatment number 1. This is here 1, 2, 
3, 4 and here 5. And similarly, if you try to take here, see here treatment number here, suppose here 6. So, you can see here 1, 2 and then here Three, four, and here five. So you can see here treatment number six has been repeated five times. And similarly, if you try to take here one more example, I will use here a, a yellow color that may not be very clearly visible, but at least you can see because I don't want to make this design too much clumsy. Suppose if I try to take here treatment number three. So, you can see here tip number 3 is coming here 1, 2, 3, 4 and here 5. So, similarly you can uh, look for treatment number 2, 4 and 5 yourself. So, now we also have understood what is the meaning of r equal to 5. Now, we are going to understand about lambda is equal to 2. So, now if you try to see here, I will use here a, a different color of pen, so that you can see what I am going to do with lambda equal to 2. What is the meaning of lambda equal to 2? That means, every pair of treatment is occurring lambda time. That means, out of T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6, if you try to choose any two treatments, then they are occurring together in lambda equal to 2 blocks. So, let us try to take here uh, some example and try to understand it. Suppose, I try to take here T 1 and T 2. So, now you can see here T 1 and T 2 they are occurring here in block number 1 and T 1 and T 2 are occurring in say here block number 2. And you can see here that T 1 T 2 are not occurring in any other block. And Similarly, if you try to take here another example here, say T4 and uh, say here T5. So, let us try to see in block number 1, no, in block number 2, no, in this uh, block number 3, no, block number 4, no, block number 5, yes, you can see here T4 and T5, they are occurring in block number 5. Now, in block number 6, no block number 7 no block number 8 no block number 9 no block number 10 you can see here this t4 and t5 they are occurring together so this is occurring in block number 10 and similarly if you try to take any other pair of treatment and you can experiment that every pair of treatment is occurring here two times so you can see here t1 t2 they are occurring two times T4, T5 that is also occurring 2 times. So, here I can say here lambda is equal to 2. So, this is the meaning of different parameters in the case of balance incomplete block design and I, and I hope that now it is clear and it will not create any confusion for you. Right. Now, we try to see that we had uh, taken here uh, those 3 conditions and we try to see how these three conditions are satisfied in this example. So, if you try to see the first condition what we had considered, this was B k is equal to V r. So, you can see here what is the value of here B k. We have here 10 blocks and every block here is see here 3 plots. So, 10 into 3 is 30 and what is here V r? There are here 6 treatments and every treatment has been replicated 5 times. So, 6 into 5 is again 30. So, you can see here that B k is equal to V r, this is holding true. Now, the second condition here is lambda into V minus 1 is equal to r into k minus 1. So, if you try to see here this thing lambda into V minus 1. So, if you try to see here this lambda here is 2 and V here is 6. So, this becomes here 2 into 5 which is equal to here 10. 
then r into k minus 1. So, r here is 5 and k here is 3. So, this becomes here 5 into 2 which is equal to here 10. So, you can see here that this condition lambda into v minus 1 is equal to r into a minus 1 that is also satisfied. Now, third condition b is greater than or equal to v. So, you can see here b here is 10 and v here is 6. So, means obviously 10 is greater than 6, right. So, this condition that 10 is greater than 6 is satisfied. So, this condition b is greater than or equal to v, this is satisfied. So, now you can see that in this uh, design what you have suggested here, all the three conditions are satisfied. Right. Now, here comes another doubt. So, that means it gives us a sort of indication that if you can find set of such parameter which are satisfying these three conditions. So, is it always possible to get the blocks of the corresponding design or is it always possible to obtain a BIBD? Now, here is a problem that even if the parameters satisfy these relations 1, 2 and 3, first, second and third, it is not always possible to arrange the treatments in blocks to get the corresponding design. Now, the next question is this, then what are the conditions under which uh, we can find such design? So, up to now, to the best of my knowledge, the necessary and sufficient conditions to be satisfied by the parameters for the existence of a BIBD are not known. Right. So, what we try to do that whenever we want to use a BIBD, some uh, BIBDs are available in that tables. Right. And uh, those uh, and from those uh, tables, uh, you can choose a design and can use it. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, up to now, the BIBD is involving at most uh, to 20 replication and their method of constructions, they are known. Right. So, this means that these three conditions, B k is equal to V r, lambda V minus 1 is equal to r k minus 1 and B greater than or equal to V, these are only some necessary conditions. They are not the necessary and sufficient conditions. And the construction of such a design depends on the actual arrangement of the treatment into block and this problem is handled in combinatorial, combinatorial mathematics. You see, uh, we we'll make it here clear that whenever we are trying to study the topics in this designs of experiment, then the designs of experiment has two aspects. One is the construction of design and second is the analysis of design. Construction of design itself is a huge area in which people are working. They are trying to uh, suggest that uh, uh, these different types of rule using the combinatorial mathematics that how the designs or their blocks can be constructed. And second aspect is how to conduct the analysis of variance in those designs. So, let me make here clear that in this course, we are not considering the constructions of the design. Possibly for that you need another full course. But what we are doing here, we are trying to consider the analysis in those designs and that is why we are concentrated, uh, concentrating on the analysis of variance in those designs. So, I thought that let me make it clear here so that uh, you do not get confused. So, let us begin our lecture. So, now these three conditions as I said, they also have got a mathematical proof, right. For example, these three conditions B k is equal to V r lambda V minus 1 is equal to R a minus 1 and B k is equal to V, they have got two types of proof. One is the mathematical proof and another is some the proof which is based on some interpretation. So, let us try to consider it. 
So, now let me first consider the proof of the first condition B k is equal to V r. So, now uh, you can recall that uh, we have defined the incidence matrix say n which is containing the elements n i j and this capital N is a B cross V matrix. right? Now, what we try to see here that we try to find out the values of these two quantities E 1 B n E V 1 and E 1 V n transpose E B 1. So, you can recall that this E which is the matrix of m cross n has all elements unity. That means, all the elements in this m cross n matrix were 1. right? So, if you try to see here both these quantities this and this they are the scalars and they are transpose of each other. So, they have got the same value mean the transpose of a scalar has the same value. So, let us try to consider their product. It is very simple just try to write down here these values. For example, here you can see here this is the value of here E 1 B and then I try to write down here this incidence matrix N and then I try to write down here E V 1 and after that you simply try to multiply this and this you will get here a vector like here summation over J n 1 j summation over j n 2 j and up to here summation over j and n b j. And then if you try to further multiply it here, so um, that is simply going to be here because all these values they are actually here k. This is what you have assumed. So, now this is going to be here the vector of here k means uh, all the elements are going to be here the, the same as k and this is here a vector of order 1 by b. So, this is going to be k plus k plus k b times. So, this is going to be here b k. And similarly, if you try to take the transpose of this quantity here, I try to take the transpose and try to write down here. Then I try to write down here this is here e 1 v, then this is here n and this is here e b 1. right? And if you simply try to multiply this and this, you will get here summation over i So, this is going to be here summation over i and i 1 up to here summation over i and i v and summation over n i 1 and i 2 and i v they are going to be simply here r which is according to the definition of this b i b d. So, now you can see here you are trying to sum this r v times. So, this is going to be here r plus r plus r up to v times and this is going to be here v r. Now, you can see here these two quantities they are both are a scalar and they are simply the transpose. So, the transpose of a scalar is the same as the scalar. So, I can write down here that b k is equal to here v r and hence this proves the result. Now, similarly if you try to consider here the second result lambda into v minus 1 is equal to r times a minus 1. Then try to consider this matrix n transpose n. So, you can see here I have here I have written the matrix n transpose and here n. And remember the order of n here is what we are considering here is b cross v. So, right. So, now if you try to just multiply here we get here this matrix and if you try to see here what are the different elements of this matrix that is more important for us to understand. Multiplication is a very simple thing. What is here? Uh, this is summation over i n square i 1. You have seen that uh, this in the case of b i b d and i j will take value either 0 or 1. So, you are trying to uh, sum over i for all the values of n i j for a given value of j. So, that means, if you try to square 0 that will come out to be 0 that is 0 square is 0 and if you try to square here 1 it will again come out to be here 1. So, this i is going to be here in this case uh, r times 1 and remaining times 0. So, this value will become here r. So, all the elements in the diagonal of the matrix they are going to be here r r r. And now, if you try to consider here these terms or let me use here a different color pen, this term. 
So, if you try to see these are the summation of the products of Nij. So, since Nij's take value 0 or 1, so the this uh, product of n i1 and n i2 is going to be 1 only if n i1 is equal to 1 and n i2 equal to 1 otherwise this is going to be 0. So, you have assumed that a pair of treatment occurs lambda times in the entire design. So, this value is going to be here lambda and all the off diagonal elements of this matrix they can be obtained here as a lambda right. Now, because of the same thing what I just explained you here, right. So, now you try to find out here the value of n transpose n into a v 1. So, you can see here this is what you have obtained n transpose n and this is here a v 1. So, if you try to multiply it here you will get here the vector like r plus lambda times v minus 1 and all the elements are going to be the same in this vector r plus lambda times v minus 1. So, I can take this element outside uh, of this vector as common and then I can write down here as say r plus lambda times v minus 1 into e v 1 right. Now, I try to do the same thing and I try to consider here the same thing n transpose n e v 1, but this time first I try to multiply here n into e v 1. So, I write down here n and then I am writing here 1 and if I try to multiply them I will be getting here a vector like summation over j n 1 j summation over j n 2 j up to here summation over j n b j. And these values you know these are going simply going to be here k right, because what will happen these are going to be the sum of zeros and ones, because n i j takes value 0 or 1. So, when you are trying to take here this sum, then what will happen that this sum will become uh, like 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 up to and so on. So, the number of ones which will appear in this summation will be equal to k. So, that is why because there are only k plots in which you are trying to give the k uh, number of treatments right. So, this will become here a vector like here this one in which all the elements are going to be k and now you have here n and this vector here try to uh, multiply them and then you will see here this will come out to be here like this. This k is a scalar, so uh, this will come as common outside this thing and then you will try to write down here this vector here r because you are trying to now sum, uh, summation over here i and i 1. So, once again this is going to be a sum like 0 plus 1 plus 1 up to here like this and the number of ones they are going to be the number of times a treatment is uh, being replicated in the entire design. So, this is going to be here r. So, now this will become here, here a vector of all the elements with r and then if you try to write down here this is this can be written here as a k r e v 1 and remember one thing uh, that both k and r they are scalars right and do not get confused with the symbols that we have used in the incomplete block design where k and r both were the vector quantities. Now, if you try to consider these two equations 2 and 3 which I had uh, given here this is your here equation number 2 and this is here equation number here 3. So, both are the same because you are simply trying to write down n transpose n e v 1 is equal to n transpose n e v 1. The only thing is this now you are trying to first multiply this thing earlier you were trying to multiply these two terms together that does not make any difference uh, from the matrix theory point of view. So, if you try to see here r plus a lambda e minus 1 e v 1 is equal to k r e v 1. So, this implies that r plus lambda v minus 1 should be equal to k r. Well, remember one thing do not do this mistake that you try to cancel out this e v 1 from the uh, left hand right uh, uh, and uh, right hand side of the equality sign. This cannot be done because this is a vector. 
So, now if you try to solve the, this equation you get here lambda into v minus 1 is equal to r k minus 1 and so we have got the proof result number 2. And now we come to this proof of the result number 3. So, we want to show here that b is greater than or equal to v. So, from the result uh, uh, 1 that we have just obtained uh, or the equation where we have obtained here the you can see here, here we have obtained the this n transpose n. Right. So, we try to use this result here and we try to find out its determinant. Right. Now, finding determinant is extremely simple and uh, that is not a topic where I should explain you here. Means, I believe that you know how to find out the determinant. So, if you try to find out the determinant of this n transpose n, which I am indicating by here like this symbol, right. Um, this will come out to be r plus lambda times v minus 1 into r minus lambda raised to the power of v minus 1. And since we have already found the condition that r into k minus 1 is equal to lambda v minus 1. So, I can replace this lambda v minus 1 over here and then you can see here this r and r get cancels out and we get here uh, this term r k into r minus lambda raised to the power of v minus 1. Now, we have to first find whether this product is going to be 0 or not, this determinant is going to be 0 or not. Well, this is not going to be 0. Why? Because you see this whole term is going to be 0 when r equal to 0, this is not possible or k is equal to 0, which is not possible because you cannot say that the treatment is uh, uh, replicated 0 times or the block size is 0. The only condition here is that when r minus lambda is equal to 0. So, now we try to check whether this condition will hold true or not. So, if you try to see here that r minus lambda is equal to 0, that means if you try to write down here this condition r k minus 1 is equal to lambda v minus 1 then r is equal to lambda. So, that means this implies here k is equal to v. And if you are trying to take here k equal to v, that means the number of here plots and v here is the number of treatments. So, you are trying to say here by writing that k equal to v that uh, the number of plots and the number of treatments they are going to be the same because if they are same then the design is a complete block design. So, obviously, you have not considered here the complete block design because you have seen that all the treatments are not appearing in all the blocks. So, this assumption that k equal to v, this contradicts the, incom uh, the incompleteness of the design. So, now I can say here that this determinant is not going to be 0. So, now this n transpose n is going to be a v cross v non-singular matrix. So, we can write down here rank of n transpose and is v. And we also know from the matrix theory that rank of n is the same as the rank of n transpose n. And so, the rank of n is going to be here v. And you have done a result where you can say that the rank of the matrix is going to be the uh, less than or equal to the minimum value between the number of rows and number of columns. So, using that result you have here in this matrix here n which is of order b cross v you have here e number of rows and v columns here. So, I can write down here that rank of n is going to be less than equal to b right. So, if I try to combine these two results over here we can write down here v is less than equal to b or b is greater than or equal to v and this proves the third result also. Right. So, okay, now we come to an end to this uh, lecture here and uh, you can see here that in this uh, lecture we have understood uh, the basic structure of balance incomplete block design and uh, we have uh, stated here the three conditions and we also have uh, considered the proofs of those uh, three conditions. These three conditions can also be proved using the 
arguments means arguments i will try to show you that what is the meaning of b k and what is the meaning of vr and so on so that we will try to continue in the next uh, lecture so before leaving as i said during the lecture that we are going to use here the results from the incomplete block design so now i will request you that please try to have a good revision of the concepts definition and terms of uh, incomplete block design and in case if you have not done so at least you should keep all the slides with you when you are trying to watch the next videos so you try to practice it try to revise it and i will see you in the next lecture till then goodbye